I'd like to thank the folks at Blue Stockings for hosting this event and uh, the folks at the LGBT Community Center for sponsoring it. The book is oddly normal and it's about raising our youngest son, Joe, who came out. Hey, there's Joe right there. He came tonight. I realized it might embarrass him to be pointed out, but embarrassing my kids is kind of my job as a dad, so it's okay. A lot of kids just have no problem at all coming out today. The fact that Ellen DeGeneres is on television and Glee is on television makes it an environment where these kids are perfectly comfortable. So we're not saying that every gay kid has a problem, but a lot still do, ours did, and that's what we care about. So if you could just introduce yourself like you would to a friend or something. Okay. Hello, I'm Joseph. Um, I am, well, I'm 16 years old and I'm gay and I like reading and stuff. There's not much, I'm not an especially complex character, quite honestly. Uh, May 4th, 2013. Your SAT registration is complete. One of the things about being the son of a reporter is that you get... Ar I've had articles written about me. So have my siblings. He said, you know, I've been thinking that I might want to write a book about you and your life and the gay thing and the coming out. I've got an idea of how it would go. Um, it, it, it could help people and I was like, dude, just write the book. Stop talking. <laughs> I was apparently a very bright and shiny and extremely flamboyant kid. Like at the age of four, I asked my mother if next year for Halloween I could be a disco lady. He was quite a fabulous little toddler. Yeah, he had a feather boa. It was this pink boa, and then he'd wrap it around his neck, and, you know, he'd roam around the house in his boa. And we'd think, you know, that's a little different. Sam never did that. <laughs> From up to sixth grade, I had no friends, no close friends at all. Like, period, none. Once a week they'd call me and Joseph would be screaming and they'd say that I had to pick him up from the school because he just couldn't function anymore. We felt that the emotional pressure of being closeted was causing Joe a lot of problems. And we felt that whatever other issues he was dealing with were tied up in that. We knew that coming out was going to be a very tricky thing for him, and the odds that it would go well were not good. And he had this day when he just uh, blew up at these other boys, and he came home and he went into the bathroom and gathered up all the Benadryl in the house and started taking it. And he had looked at the warning that said, do not take more than 12 pills in any 24-hour period. So he made sure to take more than twice as many as that. He was deadly serious. And, uh, but the lucky thing is that it's really hard to overdose on Benadryl. I go to the center every Saturday. It's a place where you can go and basically just talk with awesome gay people. That's where he found out he wasn't alone. Right. And he found out that other kids have worse stories. He, he came home one day and he said, you know, I'm really boring. <laughs> you know, compared to these other kids, the things that they've been through, and I, I'm, I'm just, you know, my story isn't even all that interesting. If there's anything I want to get across about this book is that it's not the simple story. It's not the teen, homosexual teen bullied suicide attempt. Because there's so much more going on. There's the attempt over 10 or 12 years to apply a diagnosis to Joe's behavior because he was so 
uh, trouble in school and when a teacher would push him he would push back and they and teachers said oh this is oppositional defiant disorder I think he's got ADHD this seems to be an autism spectrum problem it could be Asperger's and over and over we heard these diagnoses and in a huge and really profound way when he was out and passed the sort of emotional explosion of coming out he was himself and the pressure was off and he just over the next year and a half two years started to unclench with this pressure off he was just a happier more grounded person Well, that, that, that is truly awful. It, it really is. I, I'm trying but to warn you.